On today's menu, we have the M16 and the S17 from Asus. Is that straight? Sure, it's straight enough. Okay, so let's start off with the top device. This is the G15. It's a universally respected and appreciated product for what it is. It's a very popular AMD based device and I liked it. I liked it so much that I bought one for personal use. I spent a good chunk of money on this thing a couple months ago and it's a great device and I liked it. I really, really liked it until this thing came out. So this is the M16. Now this is a device that's running Intel's newest 11th gen CPUs and it's very similar in form factor and idea to the G15, but it's just better. It's got a better screen, it's got a bigger screen, smaller bezels, it's got a webcam, it's got a whole bunch of features in it that make it a better overall product than what the AMD equipped G15 was. Now that being said, this is filmed before the Intel embargo, so I cannot reveal the kind of benchmarks and performance metrics on this particular CPU, but I can confirm a few things. Number one, it's faster. For my particular workflow and the stuff that I do, it's faster than what the G15 was. It's also a little bit more power hungry. The M16 comes with a 240 watt AC adapter. The G15 came with a 200 watt adapter. That 40 watt difference may seem insignificant, but they're supplying the Intel based M16 with a more powerful AC adapter because it can use it. And because it can use it, it has to be able to vent off that extra heat in some way or form. We'll get into that in a second. And the third thing I noticed is it still has undervolting. I thought, or I was worried that they would remove that feature, but for the enthusiasts and for myself included, like I just, I always like to undervolt my systems and the M16 and I guess the 11th gen CPUs still allow undervolting. Okay, so some thoughts on the aesthetics of the M16. It comes in a black option and this is a like basically pure black variant compared to like the dark gray that we saw in the G15. The hole patterning and like that prismatic reflection that you see through the holes remains unchanged. The top panel is actually a little bit thicker than the G15. Uh, you'll see why in a second, but if you look at the side of this thing, there's a bit of a taper, like it starts thicker at the bottom of the screen and then it kind of tapers to a thinner top edge. And it's because this panel is all screen, like top to bottom screen. There's a very thin bezel around this device. It's an awesome look. It's bright, it's color accurate, it's QHD, it's super fast. It's a great screen for gaming as well as for content creation. This to me is like peak gaming laptop screen for what I like to do with my laptops. Uh, I will say it's actually a different panel than the one on the Legion 5 Pro and the Legion 7. I thought they'd be the same because spec wise they're very similar, but that's a CSOT screen like the China Star Opto Electronics. This is an AUO panel. It's something that we're probably more familiar with if you're into sweaty laptop nerd stuff, but this is a, AUO panel and it looks good. Now, there is one thing that I am slightly concerned about. They vent the exhaust towards the back, like out the back of the device. But because these are built in a way that the screen is kind of covering a portion of the exhaust, it's a little bit strange on the M16. So if you look at the G15, the bottom of the laptop screen has like a plastic, I guess, shroud covering the LED drivers and the exhaust hits this plastic shroud. And even in my review, I was like, I don't love the fact that it's doing that, but because it's a shroud and it's not like the actual screen, I was like, whatever, right? And over the course of the time they've been using this, I've never noticed any issues. But on this thing, the M16, that exhaust is just blasting right against the panel. And I'm sure Asus has thought of this, like clearly they've looked at this, right? And realized that could be an issue, but it's just strange to me that you can blast the panel, like the raw pixels with so much heat and it still be okay, I hope. Uh, but that is, yeah, that's a little bit strange to me. Uh, the other thing, that taper that I mentioned earlier on the side of the display panel, I think it's because the LED drivers, they have to pack it somewhere, right? Because there's no chin anymore, you have to pack it behind the screen. I think that's what they're doing. That's why the bottom of this thing is a little bit thicker. When you hold it up, it is noticeable. This does feel slightly thicker. It's still a very thin and light laptop though. Uh, there's another thing I noticed, the rubber strip that runs along the back, like the tail end of it, it is, a little bit higher than the one on the G15. And it serves to prop up the device a little bit more for improved airflow over the G15. And it makes you think, why'd they do it, right? 
why would they prop up this device more than the G15? We'll find out in the future. Okay, um, let's talk about, oh, the internals. So this is a slightly different keyboard deck than the G15. So this has like a soft touch finish. It's similar to the G14, if you remember that thing, but it's like a nice soft touch rubberized material. I really like this stuff when it's new, but it's one of those things where time can only tell what it'll actually feel like after years of Cheetos fingers and greasy stuff. Like this soft touch finish, it can age worse than just hard plastics. And the keyboard, exactly the same layout, but it's actually slightly different in feel. These keys on the M16 seem to have a bit more pressure required to be able to press it down, but they're both great keyboards. And the lighting on this device, supposedly the retail units have RGB lighting. My unit is just white and I can't seem to adjust it in software, but apparently the retail product of the M16 is gonna have some degree of colorful keyboard lighting. Trackpad remains unchanged and there's also a webcam. Now I gotta be honest, a couple years ago when they first introduced like one of their Zephyrus products that didn't have a webcam, I was all for it. I was like, yeah, I don't use my webcam that much. But during the pandemic, holy smokes, I miss it. On the G15, like there've been so many calls I've had to take for work. And I'm just like, sorry guys, no webcam. Just gonna have to deal. Uh, but this, yeah, it's nice. And it's not obtrusive. It's like right in that thin bezel. And I'm glad that this device has a webcam. Now, if you take a look at the inside, you can see the two NVMe bays, and these are super fast. These are now PCIe 4, and there's also 16 gigs of RAM that's baked onto the motherboard, but you can upgrade that through one slot. So that's the M16. It is really, really good. Uh, I will say, we do not know its pricing. At this point, Asus has said nothing about pricing. And my gut feeling is that this will not be cheap. I don't know how much more expensive it will be than the G15. I mean, I wish it was the same price so that it'd be truly competitive, but something tells me the M16 will not be like the value king product out there. Okay, let's move on to the ultimate flagship. This is the S17 from Asus this year, also equipped with 11th gen. Intel stuff, but the thing that makes this thing special is the keyboard. You see that? I'm gonna do it one more time. When you open the lid, the keyboard pops up. We've seen pop-up screens, we've seen pop-up other things, but I've never seen a keyboard that popped up like this. Certainly not one that was mechanical. So, I spent a couple days on this device before I shot this video because this is one of those devices where you just kind of get used to it. You, you have to feel it out and you have to put your mindset in of like, if I bought this and I was using it before I actually talk about it. So my initial impression when I first popped this thing open was, okay, I like the keyboard switches. This is the same switch as the mechanical keyboard we saw in the Strix Scar G15, but the orientation of it, just that slight tilt, I don't know, it's like, five degrees, maybe eight degrees. It's a very slight tilt, but it makes it feel very different. And me personally, I like it, but I had to get used to it. And I wouldn't say that I prefer this keyboard over a regular flat keyboard without any kind of incline. Now, because this product is more unique and special, I don't think you just walk into a store and try it. So I think it'll be difficult for people to make a purchase decision based on just this keyboard. There's a lot of other cool stuff going on in this device, but if you're eyeing it just for the keyboard, I highly recommend testing it out if you can. Now, the reason why they even pop it up in the first place is because it improves airflow. By lifting up the keyboard like this, it allows air to, to pass through the hot components more efficiently. But yeah, this is the S17. I'm obviously not gonna do like a full review on this thing. This is once again, an engineering sample. The keyboard deck, like this area, the palm rest and the kind of surrounding keyboard thing is also a soft touch finish. And on the top left of the keyboard, there's a scroll wheel, which is set to adjust the volume in its current state. But that is the S17, like a very cursory look at it. The internals, if you wanna take a peek in there, uh, it's just got all the regular 11th gen stuff. So PCIe 4, super fast drives, and there's three slots in this one. But yeah, that's the S17. I'll be doing reviews on this stuff as the retail units come in, like proper full reviews. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time. And if you're wondering about the table, I have something in the works. You'll see.